Glorious Gaming is well known in the gaming world and their DMMK Pro is a premium 75% CNC machine aluminum keyboard. It's got lighting panels on the sides, the light stays classy and not cheesy. Prelude Goat Screw in Stabilizers, where goat must oh. stand for greasiest of all time. The rotary encoder, or the knob, is programmable and clickable. A gasket mounted design gives us that flex and the 32-bit ARM processor handles all the biz. If you like the content, I have four more builds lined up and one of those is unlike anything you've seen before in a keyboard. So if you're into that stuff, consider subscribing to the channel, hit the bell to get notified when I publish these videos. But first, unboxing. Knife. These uh, drone blades are pretty sharp. Whoa, this is literally a knife. <laughs> That's a cool way to pack space bars, I guess. Black on white, Supai R2. All right, cool. Which film, uh, there we go. <clears throat> Always been a fan of the packaging of these switches. So this is the glorious Panda switches. Yeah, I just got the Holy Panda X switches. So for this build, it's gonna be the glorious Panda switches. So that's it. Keyboard itself, some stabs, was it Duroc? I don't remember really. And then these are for uh, the stabs as well. So here's the keyboard. We're obviously gonna start by just unboxing the keyboard. Uh, we're probably gonna test the PCB and see that everything is working fine. We'll leave all of this stuff for now, just in the box. I actually want to start with the keycaps. Yeah, let's just put the keyboard over here. I'm sorry if that's unheard of, um, but I think keycaps are kind of cool. I really like the color of these. There we go. It's kind of cool. I'm kind of falling in love with white stuff on the keyboard front, so like white cases, white keycaps. Everything's just gonna fall out and die. This is nice. Paired with these blue ones as well, I think this is gonna be pretty neat. So this is the color theme that we're going for. I really like this. I, I hope this will look nice on the keyboard itself. Nordic layout with all the weird letters. Uh. So whenever you see the uh, the microphone company Rode, call it Rode, but there you go, Rode it is. Now let's move, oh, hello. I heard of this thing called autofocus, it's kind of cool. Put these to the side and start working on the keyboard. Dive into it. So here it is, the GMMK Pro. Again, we need a knife. <laughs> Holy moly. This is sharp. Don't get struck by drones. It's gonna hurt really bad. All right, packaging is really nice. Sticker, I don't know why people like stickers. I'm not judging. So it's got, uh, it's got some weight to it. The knob is here. Everything. It's got some really nice weight to it. Extra gasket strips. Ah, yeah, okay, cool. Screws, switch puller, keycap puller, and we also have, is this USB-C, C or CA? So this is a USB-C and a USB-A cable. At least it comes in the box. That's it for the content. Oh, now let's get into the keyboard itself. Probably wanna go closer. And then this focus thing. I like it. It's really heavy. The knob ticks, has this clicky feel on the knob. Uh, I'd say that's pretty nice. The first thing we're gonna do is to straight up 
plug in all the keycaps, not the keycaps, but the um, uh, switches and the keycaps, just to get like the initial feeling of just assembly without doing anything. And then we're gonna go in and mod as much as we, we feel like. And I think for modding, it's gonna be lubing the switches, replace, maybe replace those. And then for the stabs, stab film, I don't remember what they're called, sorry. All right, let's start by getting the switches in. Pandas. More stickers, so yeah, stickers. Tell me in the comments why you like stickers and how, how do you use the stickers? Do you put this on your backpack or do you put it on the backside of your MacBook? You have to just tell me because I have no clue how people use these stickers. None of these are lubed, so this is gonna be like a full unlubed, just completely out of the box experience uh, before we start working on the actual keyboard modding itself. Hopefully, I've been hearing a lot of uh, bad things about the original stabs. So hopefully, I'm kind of hoping that's the case so we can switch them out and uh, go from bad to good. Ooh. That's nice, I'm gonna go closer with the microphone. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. They're really easy to get in here. They just align perfectly. Super easy to assemble. What I really like about this layout as well is the separation between the, uh, the arrow keys and also this row right here. Which for, for some bizarre reason, people have page up and page down. I'm sure that if you ask a thousand people when they used page up and page down last, they will not be able to tell you. Maybe like two guys, I don't know. When do you use page up and page down? Have you used page up and page down the last like 19 years? Let me know in the comments. But I have to say that <laughs> even unlubed, these pandas feel really good. So we're just gonna start with some keycaps. And for sound tests, I mean, again, I'm not gonna be able to do this in, oh. Even straight out of the box, this I'm gonna lean in for the for the microphone to pick up. This feels weird. Hmm. That's not too bad for uh, for some default. Oh yeah. Yeah, we are gonna lube them now. This is gonna be really interesting. Um, let's see how the space bar behaves because that's. One of the... They do feel sticky. So we'll definitely have to do something. And there are two more here. Let's just try backspace. It's, it's, it's stuck. Oh, do you see that? So, wow. Oh, the rumors were right. That's just insane. Oh, wow. <laughs> huh. 
How does this even... Where's the QC on that? Well, I mean, and that does make it a better video because we have to mod stuff. So that's cool. So we're gonna have to open and do things. I just realized that for Nordic, the keys are different even on the numbers. I completely forgot about that because I'm using the US layout now, but on seven, you have the and icon, while on the Nordic one, that's a forward slash. And to be honest, I actually have to look up the layout that I grew up with because I haven't used Nordic layout in like, over 10 years actually. Okay, backspace, that's, that's okay. <laughs> I, I grew up with this. I grew up with this layout and I'm just like, I can't. And then we have comma, semicolon, and Nordic. Because normally they actually go over here. Aha, this whole row, this whole row, missing a key that's also why I have that little shift over there instead of the long shift that we're used to from the uh, US layout there we go delete page down we also need to replace the page up here now it correctly there we go because of the 75% layout tactics ticks I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that all right now for the cool Nordic letters oh ah uh, there we go ah, uh, oh. because what happens with a Nordic layout is that like curly braces and, and brackets and everything goes up here with the alt gr it's horrible for any coding. Go on, no, it's just MN, isn't it? M, M. All right, we have a build. It's kind of pingy. There's a ding, ding, ding sound. So we're gonna try to kill that. All right, it's getting really, really late. So what I'm gonna do for this build today, we're gonna do a sound test, but again, these sound tests aren't gonna be perfect because this is gonna have to be done in two separate days. I mean, the, the camera and the setup and everything will be roughly the same. Uh, the acoustics can change because of things going on in the room and all that stuff, but at least for this sound test, Oh, USB-A. Hang on. Who uses, it's 2022. Who uses USB-A for anything? USB-A. Ay, ay, ay. Center, USB here. Chuk. So now we at least have a keyboard that's working because the light and everything here as well. It's got RGB lighting. Just gonna launch via and see if everything works. But I really want T to work. Probably bent those. Did I ah, bent the pin? So no wonder that didn't work. Let's bend the pin back and try to do this properly because that's what you're supposed to do. Like that. Okay, so that's a T. Let's have a look at print. Not bent, so might just be mapping or something. 
What is that even? Is it print screen? Might have to plug this into a Windows machine. Now, obviously, our next step is to fix the steps because this is stupid. But it really, really feels good. Fifty six. <laughs> Thumbs down. Let's we'll start with just getting the keycaps off, getting the switches out, flip it over, unscrew everything so we can have a look inside. Because we need to deal with these first. Stabilizers. I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with the actual stabilizers themselves. I don't, might not need to replace the actual stabilizers, but if we wanted to, we, we can. Pull the stabilizers up, or you can push them down. You can actually feel that they're stuck. All right, so I unscrewed the stabilizers and uh, forgot to hit record. But look at the grease that is just everywhere. It's so greasy. So these pads here are the ones that basically made everything. Look at this. But I've decided to kill these and start over. So I'm gonna clean the PCB just to get all that goo off. We should probably just scrape these off. So now I'm officially ruining these. They kind of just dissolve. That's kind of disturbing actually. So this is gonna be a tweezerless approach, which is probably the dumbest thing ever. Oh, that works. Okay, cool. So apparently you don't need tweezers. Found the tweezers, but like we figured out, we don't really need that. We can be a bit more brute force on that. I'm going to lube basically friction contact points. So the inner side of the housing here and the stabilizers themselves. 
a lubricant with high film strength and excellent flow properties perfect for your stab wires and this is the uh, 205 so I'm going to start the sides Get an equal amount this is probably a bit too much so whatever's left we're going to put back here I'm trying to get this even Cool. All right, welcome back to the mess. It's time to screw these stabilizers in. Let's just pop them in. And when I, when I say pop them in, I mean struggle really hard just to get them in. Shouldn't this be easy? Well, at least they're not stuck anymore. That's a good sign. They're not stuck. So hopefully this works. Um, I mean, even though this is fun, I really don't want to open everything back up again. So I really hope this works. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's just get the stabs through. Just force them through, I guess. I kind of forgot. I, I read about that. That you have to sand them because they're a bit too wide. This was not a part of the plan. What I do you want to just try this one? Because it's like right there. Okay. <laughs> Best test ever. Tell me you grew up with track and field without telling me you grew up with track and field. I think this solved the initial problem. Now we just need to solve the new problem. Let's just try the return key as well. Uh, because I think we might need to fix some of the rattle here. So. Find it a tad scratchy here. But at least they're not stuck. All right, so I'm gonna pack everything down for the night. It's midnight. And then get back into part three, modding the stabs to get it to fit. Welcome to day 
three. What happened last time was that we changed the stabs into these Duroc V2s and they don't really fit. So the thing is that this area right here, um, it's basically too tight. So it works with the, uh, with the stabs that come in the box, but not with the new ones. So what we have to do, <laughs> we, actually, we have to file them down, or at least that's what I'm gonna do, uh, just to get them to fit. All right, let's unscrew the stabs, take them out, file them down, and put it back together. Now oh, they're lubed and stuff, so might replace them. I don't have enough. Oh, well then we have to file down these ones actually, but uh, we can do that. Let's start the filing process. Yes, we have to re -loop everything. It's part of the game. Technically, you could probably do this on the plate it's instead of the actual uh, stabs, but I don't really want to ruin the plate. We need roughly a bit less than a millimeter to get down to, to the right width. some fours it'll work so I'm gonna file it down just a whoa. I'm gonna file it down just a tad more because it was a bit tight but I don't want to kind of ruin the structure of the staff itself so I don't want to go too far All right, now that the stabs are back on, we can we can try this again. So we're gonna put this we're gonna put this down here. This goes like that. Let's pull it up, and this better work. That's through. That's through. Come on, guys. This is not what we agreed on. Guys.
there they are and now of course we need to remember these lead strip thingies i honestly don't remember what direction they were supposed to go but let's start by just checking the space bar here we have a space bar with some let's put in these three from the springs of the switches and we're gonna glue them so hopefully that's gonna be gone in a minute. So before we continue and reassemble everything and start lubing the switches I want to do a tape on. Now they didn't have the default blue one so let's see get here. I mean, there is actually foam, but you gotta remember to have fun as well. itself and then it's loading time make sure you uh, make room for the daughter board just double check that it goes in double check that it connects properly back up and now I'm gonna have to go through and loop 83 switches it's built back up everything is ready now except this and then when that's looped we're actually done with the build so we're gonna start that it's late o'clock as well today and it's probably gonna be a day four but we are gonna start by setting up the loop station and everything. See how that goes. So we are gonna do 83 switches, eight, three. That's a lot of switches. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's only room for 35. So we're only gonna have to do like a full run almost three times for this build. So here's the pile that we're gonna have to lube. We're going for a Crytox 205 grade zero. And we have this switch opener as well. It's gonna help us out. I'm just gonna lay out a row of 20. These are tactile. I don't really want to ruin the tactile feeling, so I'm not going to over lube them. I might not even lube the leaves, so we'll, we'll just have to see. So when it comes to the lubing, I've split the switches up into the bottom housing, the stem, and the springs. And when they're all lubed up, they're going back onto the keyboard 
and we're done. That's it, that's the build. So I'm gonna dive into this and have some fun. And before I move on, I want to check this row and see if I've lost any of the tactility of the switches. Okay. So here's non-lubed. Non-lubed to the right, lubed to the left. Changes are minimal, but it's less scratchy. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to establish a bag that is lubed and one that is not, just so I know for later. So this bag right here is gonna be full of the lube switches. So that was five that gives us 80 something plus more to go. 